Hello YouTube, it is Chris here, and in today's episode, we're gonna be having an epic EDC battle with the world's smallest pocket knives. So stick with me. Welcome back everybody and thank you for sticking with me. Like I said, today we're gonna be having an epic EDC battle with the world's smallest pocket knives. Now what spurred this video was Bomber & Co actually reached out to us via email and said that they just got done with their Kickstarter for the B2 Bomber Nano Tactical Pocket Knife. So I replied and I was like, all right, Captain Tactical, let's see what this baby's got. Then around the same time, we were contacted by Go Prepared Survival. You guys have seen them on our channel plenty of times. And they're coming out with their micro keychain EDC, which is this ceramic folding knife by Wazoo Survival Gear, a small keychain size ferrocerium rod, and then we have the Photon X Micro Light. So with both of these knives here, basically stouting to be the world's smallest folding knives, I was like, dude, we gotta do it. We gotta pit them head to head and put them to the test. So to give you a little bit of information about the B2 Bomber by Bomber and Company is this is a 440C blade, as you say, and I believe this is 5CR13 and the handle scales, and then it's a keychain. Now they're saying this is the world's smallest tactical, keyword, they threw tactical out there, for this knife and I was like, okay, so what makes it tactical? Is it the fact that it's a folding knife? Is it the fact that it's got the serrations on it? Is it the fact that it's black? Like what exactly for this particular knife makes it tactical? Now you could use the keychain and get a full hand grip on there and you could use it, but it doesn't really have a tip on it. I don't see um, a super ergonomic grip on there for fighting, but it is what it is. We'll let them call it whatever they want. However, we will call it EDC keychain blade because that's exactly what it is because it would be right at home on your keys just as easily as this folding knife by Wazoo Survival Gear. This is their ceramic folding knife. However, one of the benefits that ceramic has is it never dulls. It will chip and it can crack and break under um, some pretty intense pressure, but for the small tasks that you would put the knife under, this thing will just stay sharp forever. Now in full transparency, I have this quarter of the dime and some of these other pocket sized multi-tools not to flex because I'm not trying to show off my 35 cents. I'm just trying to show you the size reference of how tiny these blades are. I want to say this knife is just under an ounce. It's like 0.95 ounces and this one is about a half ounce. These are incredibly tiny keychain knives. They are easily concealable. You can just slip them into your pocket. It's not a big deal. Instead of actually using your nicer knives and ruining your blades, you could use these to get the job done. And this thing was super successful. It's like $400,000 raised for this particular knife. And because it's that popular and it caused that much of a stir, we definitely need to put this to the test and see if it's up to snuff. This is their ceramic blade. And when we saw this at PrepperCon and the Self-Reliance Expo and other places they've been, at their shows, you could get lucky and pick this thing up for like five bucks. So I think it would be like, are we really getting five times the blade? Are we getting five times the performance out of this blade being 25 bucks as we are from this knife? So as we were taking both of these blades, we decided to do a paper cut test and check out both of them. And right off the bat, I noticed really good positive things from both of them. The B2 Nano Blade, it did a really good job. It, the 440C, uh, the manufacturer who makes this for them definitely did a good job of making sure it's sharp. However, because this blade is so thinly profiled, I mean, it's really, really, really thin, guys. It's less than a half inch in total as far as thickness, but that's a really tiny, thin blade. I don't know how the profile is going to hold up long term if you decide to do anything a little bit rougher with this for any reason. And then this is ceramic. You don't have to sharpen this. And if it does break, well, this is like between five to 15 bucks. You should be able to just probably go out and buy a new one. We were jumped it up all the way to paracord. And both of them had a few snags where since the straight edge of the nano blade was so short, it's about an inch long. I was finding a few snags on the serrations and that would actually snag on the paracord and keep me from doing some clean cuts. And this blade, if you kind of hit the wrong angle because it's a chisel grind, you will have a little bit of difficulty cutting paracord, but overall, once you kind of get in your groove and you get comfortable with cutting, both of them do a pretty good job given the size and the weight and we moved on to some wood. So let's say you were in a survival situation. Let's say for whatever reason, these are the only two blades you got with you. So we did some shavings and see if you can make some tent stakes and some minor, 
tiny light duty camp chores and both of them actually did a really good job. They were both really good slicers. I was pretty impressed with that. And then in addition, we decided to step it up to something a little bit more difficult. And that was heavy duty tie down straps. Those tie down straps was rated for like 3000 pounds. And both of them, given their size, I was actually kind of impressed. They did a really good job. But the task that these knives are definitely designed for are opening packages, opening your mail, doing the small stuff that you don't want to whip out your bigger blades for. But at the end of the day, we are not drop force survival unless we decide to try to find a way to start a fire with these knives. And I already knew this one right here was going to start a fire because it's 90 degrees all the way around. We got a ceramic blade, a ceramic striker, very famous on Wazoo survival gear. You don't even have to open this thing up. You'll use the 90 degree spine. And both of them did a pretty good job at starting the fire. I did have a little bit more difficult because I wanted to do everything I could to avoid using the edge of this knife and we still had to try it but then we ended up getting the fire started by basically creating through the uh, rubbing against the fire steel we created a 90 degree edge on the back end of this knife and the fact that it does lock did help it keep us more secure in hand. So all in all, as EDC keychain knives, both of these did a really good job. And at their respective price points, the weights, the looks, the aesthetics, that's where you guys drop down in the comment section. You guys let me know what you think and how you feel about these knives. Do you think that they're overpriced? Do you think they're, they perform really well? I think if you want a keychain knife, these are about the two smallest and they're both gonna perform pretty well. But here on Drop Force Survival, we like to do our own individual research on everything, especially when a company contacts us. We want to see if we can get some user reviews, some feedback from customers, some information on social media, and we try to figure out the ins and outs of blades. Now, keep in mind, this is an, a blade that we've handled. We have several of these. I own about five of them. So I've had a chance to either see them, put them in different rotations. So I was very comfortable with these. But the B2 Nano was a very new blade for my channel and had all the makings to potentially be a really fun, awesome EDC keychain experience. So I run an image search on Google and a few other websites and you get to find out wherever this image has ever, ever, ever popped up. And that lets you know what websites you can buy them stuff. It shows all the retailers. It helps you sift through everything. So if you don't find any keywords, you find the pictures. However, when I did that, I found something pretty interesting about this particular knife. Now, this image search popped up on Alibaba and I was like, huh, what? How is this already on Alibaba? And it threw me for a loop because I was like, how are they copying a Kickstarter blade? Like this knife is still being created and designed according to Bomber & Co. How is this? So I decided to reach out to the actual seller slash manufacturer on Alibaba and try to get some more information about the other knife. It's the exact same design, the exact same size, the same profile. The only thing that's missing is the laser engraving of the B2 Bomber Co. And I actually heard back from them in about a day and, and I went through and they said that they actually can't send me any of the samples because they are the manufacturer and they all already promised their other customer who decided basically they are selling that knife so the seller on alibaba is selling this design is selling this knife to bomber and co which i thought was kind of interesting because bomber and co ran a four hundred thousand dollar kickstarter on this just like a month or two ago on this blade to make this project come to life for all these designs you see all these mock-up photos but then i have an email straight from the manufacturer saying that this is their knife this is their design they are the maker they're the and bomber and co is the one who bought it so for all those who spend four hundred thousand dollars out there i'm like huh it's food for thought nonetheless and maybe there isn't anything legal or wrong or immoral or any way shape or form about bomber and co taking a pre-existing design from a chinese manufacturer and then they raised money on kickstarter so they can buy a bunch of them because apparently from what i gathered they bought about thirty thousand of these for about a dollar a piece so i guess i will leave you with this do you just think it was clever marketing or do you care or not care would you be upset would you would you be pissed off if you were a backer because this thing ended up on a bunch of huge youtube channels ended up in a bunch of magazines and they ran a kickstarter and from me I didn't read anything where they said they were basically designing and creating this knife. They were very careful not to put that in the Indiegogo and the Kickstarter campaigns. But by the way, they show the 2D models and the prototypes and the images. They basically make you feel that way. And I don't know if there's anything right or wrong with that. I'm not saying anything one way or another. I'm just talking about this blade and I tested it and it worked. It was kind of neat. 
but do you think it's worth the $25 asking price? All in all, both knives would be at home and serve you well on your EDC keychain. And I don't have anything negative to say about their performance as a whole. And both of them have their own appeals and aesthetics that I can see why people would appreciate them. If you really want to go ultra lightweight, super minimalist, you want to have almost no bulk in your pocket, this is definitely the way to go. And if you want something that has kind of a cool little vibe to it, kind of has, you know, something a little bit more substantial than your gas station kind of blade that you would pick up for like a dollar. This is definitely something you can look at, but definitely drop that in the comments and let me know if you think this is worth the $25 asking price. But that's just about it for now. And if you enjoyed the test footage of this epic EDC showdown, definitely throw this video a big thumbs up and share this out with your friends and family in your social media networks so we can keep growing, thriving, and making awesome videos for you guys. But that's just about it for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.